Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Today is another weekly episode of Top 10 Mocks. This is where I show you guys the coolest custom creations I happen to see people building in LEGO throughout this last week. And if you want to check out any of the media posts from these designers, I've left all the links in the description below from where I found these images. I highly recommend that you check them out, show some support to these amazingly talented people, and I don't show these images off in any particular order of best to worst. Just the 10 coolest creations that I happen to find in LEGO this last week. Now this week we don't have any new designs uploaded to the web store www.brickvault.toys where we sell instructions to some amazing custom creations if you wanted to build them yourself, but we are incredibly busy knocking out once again some other large creations and lots of little ones. Also currently as this video releases I am at Bricks LA. You can see some footage of the previous year passing by the screen right now, so soon I'll have another fun video to show off uh, what the 2020 event was like. Some amazing creations there as well. And now let's jump into the top 10 of this week. The first one here is a single scene that comes from Pixel Fox, and the title is The Space Bar. I was about to say The Space Brawl. It looks like a few of these guys are are getting into it. Mtron and Blacktron seem to not like each other at all. But then again, it also looks like Space Police is getting involved from above as well. Even though this is a space-themed mock, there are a ton of colors included, which I really appreciate. I like the little round tiles that are in the tall bricks. I remember seeing that as a building technique from a set not too long ago, and it's a great effect. There's a few lights that were added tastefully, and with scenes like this, there's just a lot of colorful characters that you can focus on here there that really add a lot of life and vibrance to the scene. If I had to take a guess, I feel like this is what the restaurant at the end of the universe might look like, but that's just me. And then we are moving on to an absolutely amazing creation from Andrew Steele. This is the Fire Gorgon, and it's truly one of those creations when you look at it, you go, what? Is that actually Lego bricks? But yes, yes it is. It's made with a ton of specialized and modified clip pieces as well as tons of teeth and horn pieces, which when compounded together so close uh, really makes this model look like it was sculpted out of something that is not Lego bricks. But in fact, these are all Lego pieces for sure. The designer says it took more than a year to build, and I have no doubt about that in terms of designing a huge thing like this that's almost one and a half meters long and just meticulously clipping and placing and bending all of these pieces to make the wonderfully round and smooth shape of the body. Just, yeah, it looks like an absolute amazing massive amount of dedication, time, and effort went into this, and it really pays off. It feels so lifelike. I mean, if you walked into a darkly lit room and you saw this in the corner not expecting to see a model like this, you could be legitimately freaked out and no one would judge you. The model lights up at the bottom with the belly, which is really cool. And I'm showing you a bunch of pictures right now, but there are a bunch more on the Flickr that I've linked in the description below, and I highly recommend it. Check out all the Flickrs that I show you in the video description below. From Marcel V, we have Sophia's Journey, Lady Ophelia's Treehouse. This is one build in a series of story or episodic type builds where he creates a scene from an ongoing and evolving story. And I recommend that you check out the entire encounter that he's got going on between each build but this one really in particular stuck out to me because it kind of is the ultimate treehouse or at least in my mind it feels that way the stump is really really wide it's not too high off the ground and looks very easy to access and the small houses or tenant builds onto the tree look incredibly cozy and comfortable not like you've just got a wooden board and a sleeping bag on the inside which is I feel like the standard treehouse but it really does look like a series of really nice cottages have been built onto the base of what maybe was a giant tree that broke down in a storm and they're using the stump as like a baseline. I'm already kind of starting to figure out or try to piece together a bit of a storyline based on uh, how big the tree is. And ultimately, it's just a fun, simplified scene. And the brown slash tan background, I think, is a nice neutral color to express everything that you've got going on here. Now, moving on to another design, we've got Know Your Pieces. That's the designer. And the title here is 1990s Tet Holidays. This design designer has some amazing builds from different slices of life in Vietnam and Tet Holiday is their really really big holiday. So it looks like this is a very nostalgic build of what maybe the family room looks like during this season. So you can see some of the lucky money that's set out on the table. I think a few of the things that are plastered on the wall also have to do with this particular uh, event. But it's also just a nostalgic 
nostalgic recreation of what the family room looked like back in the 1990s. So you have these uh, interesting and what look like very elaborately carved wooden chairs and bench along with a few uh, very ornate and wonderfully designed trees in either corner. I really like the piece that's used for the vase here. The plasters coming off the walls, the bullion pieces really make a lot of sense to show the brick underlay and the tiling for the floor looks great. There's so much color here and the attention to detail really, really pays off for this particular creation. Now moving down, this is called the Imaginary Islands from Forlorn Empire. Micro cities are a big thing in the Lego building community. There are a few extremely, extremely talented designers. And this is a wonderful approach to a modular city that I haven't quite seen done in this style before, which is really fun. Perhaps this is maybe a solution or a proposed future solution to like rising sea levels or something where the cities themselves are built onto giant platforms and held way up above the seawater. Now maybe on a technical level, this might not be the most realistic option, but it certainly looks amazing and the flowing waterfalls that come down, I think both offer support to these suspended creations and give off that wonderful and surrealistic look of the endless flowing waterfall that seemingly comes from nowhere. The vegetation is great. You've even got some villages on the bottom uh, level, which is nice. And these little root and plant pieces at a micro scale actually play off as palm trees pretty well in this tropical climate at a micro scale. Now moving on to the designer Keiichi Kami, we have Rat. Simple enough title, and I suppose a simple enough build. It's just put together so seamlessly and perfectly that I just, I just had to, I just have to show you guys this amazing looking little rat build that we have. I don't know if there's a formal name for this particular type of build style that we have for the creature, but it looks like it's been layered and built in these kind of like tiered little sections, which is similar, I feel, to how maybe a brick sphere is built where you've got studs facing out on all sides, but he has decided to cover all of these edges with curved smooth slope pieces that mostly go in just one particular direction. It works. It really, really works as a stylistic choice, and all of the main features for this little creature are grabbed really wonderfully. The cheese, of course, is a nice little extra, and I wonder if this could trick anybody into thinking it's a real rat from a distance. Now, this build is a really interesting one. I didn't know much about this uh, ship, or I didn't even know it existed until I saw the picture here. From John C. Lamarck, we have the CAF CF 104 Red Indian. The designer has a pretty in-depth description about the history of this ship, and it certainly is one of the most unique and striking designs that I have seen belonging to a ship that actually exists, once again, in real life. It's got those large tanks on either side and these snubbed wings with just a huge intake or a series of intakes and a massive rudder. It feels like a cartoon and it's got that wonderful sleek shape. And this paint job, by the way, the decals that he added, actually exist on the ship, or certainly existed at one point on the ship. No one can deny that it is an absolutely amazing looking model. I think he captured it uh, really well in LEGO. I think the most difficult part of an airplane build for someone who's doing this in LEGO is choosing which parts can be done smoothly and which parts might need to be a little bit blocky in order to get the shape right. And John C. Lamarck really knocked it out of the park. The cockpit still feels incredibly round in the front when you have a little bit of blockiness there. And the slope pieces used for the wings, I think, match up just about perfectly. It's a really, really fun design. The decals absolutely add a wonderful amount of realism. And now we are moving on to an incredibly expressive Lego build. This is from City Sun, and the title is Edna Mode. Now, some of you might recognize this character immediately. This is Edna from The Incredibles and Incredibles 2, and she is one of those very particular yet very talented designers that has to have things done in her particular taste in style. Got a very, very strong uh, sense of aesthetic, I suppose. Her very self-satisfied and confident expression is captured wonderfully in Lego bricks. She's got her head tilted back, chin up high, and an expression on her face as if to say, yes, I am the best and I definitely know it. It's hard enough already to get uh, Lego bricks mashed together in a way that actually looks like a character with a certain particular expression, and it's even more difficult to make your Lego bricks look like a recognizable pre-existing character with a very 
very uh, understandable and visible expression. On top of that, the build actually looks relatively simple. I'm not totally sure how uh, he got some of those angles by the mouth and nose, but amazing work. And then from Tino Putienen, we have the Type G Bipedal Ambulance. And I mean, when is the last time you've seen a giant robot with two legs be anything but a war machine? I honestly can't think of an example off the top of my head right now. Maybe Bicentennial Man. <laughs> I don't really know. But I both appreciate the building techniques that were used to create this rather large uh, roller skating ambulance robot and the smaller, more human sized counterpart uh, down below. But I both appreciate the building techniques used to make the larger roller skating robot and the and the smaller assistant and also that simple use of the number three sticker between the eyes it completely changes the tone of this build completely i mean this is probably the best single example of uh, of one sticker absolutely positively changing the entire baseline the entire tone of a piece it feels lighthearted and cartoony you get the feeling that this guy that's injured is most likely going to be fine and and also the number three making up that cutesy little mouth smile gives you the impression that this ambulance robot is both sentient and enjoys their job. And it's crazy. You get all of that just by just by sticking on one little number three sticker from some old set. This is hands down the best use of a single repurposed Lego detailing. And uh, I know some people don't like stickers, but here is an absolutely amazing example of how they li quite literally can add uh, volumes to your creative ideas. Now I've gotten to the very last build of the week. This is from SP Design and we have Lego Rock Raiders UCS Loader Dozer. This is super nostalgic for me. I had a pretty good friend growing up who had most if not all of the Rock Raider sets. So this may actually be the theme I played with most as a kid growing up, at least for a couple of years. So I am all too familiar with the giant mud monster, if that's what they're called, the neon crystals, and all the different types of dozers and drillers that came from the Rock Raiders theme. Designers revisiting old themes with modern and larger and more intricate and much nicer building techniques is not anything we haven't seen before, but the truly interesting and creative connections used to make the mud monster make this nostalgic build feel just a little bit different compared to more advanced technical spaceships, which is often what we get when an old theme is revisited. The idea of building the energy crystal in just a much, much larger scale is simple but really effective, and the cockpit for the loader dozer itself uh, was put together wonderfully with a series of clip pieces and small barrels and stuff. I like the comparison shots as well where you can see what the original uh, inspiration came from, and that is going to be it for this week's top 10 mocks uh, of the week. Remember, check out all the links in the description below. You can check out the web store. If you enjoy our content you can always like or subscribe thank you so much for watching everybody and we'll see you next time at brick vault yeah.